Brookfield Asset Management recently spun off 25% of its asset management business as a standalone company and stock. This has caused a ton of confusion amongst investors, and rightfully so. As a Brookfield shareholder, I have been getting asked a ton of questions about this spinoff, so I decided to just make a video explaining everything with the hopes to clear everything up. I am going to be splitting this video into five different parts, which we'll cover. Why did Brookfield do this spinoff? The differences between the spinoff and the legacy business, key slides from Brookfield's investor presentation, key highlights from the transcript of the company explaining the spinoff, and then finally, why I think this is an opportunity for investors. So with that being said, let's just dive right into it with part one. Why did Brookfield do this in the first place? To put it simply, Brookfield believes its asset management business is more attractive on its own and will command a higher premium if it is spun off. Therefore, Brookfield went ahead and spun off 25% of the asset management business and Brookfield still owns the other 75%. So basically, there's now this brand new pure play asset manager that investors can buy on the stock market. And again, Brookfield did this because they think it will create more value for shareholders over the long term by the asset manager trading at a premium. Now, what makes this even more confusing is the legacy Brookfield asset management has now become Brookfield Corporation and trades under a new ticker. Therefore, the larger company changed its ticker from BAM to BN. So now BN is the larger legacy business. The spin-off business, which took the name Brookfield Asset Management, now trades under the old ticker, which is BAM. To put this simply, the old BAM is now BN, and the new spin-off is now BAM. Part 2. The differences between the two companies. The new BAM will have different characteristics than BN. For example, BN will not be paying a significant dividend as the business likes to keep its profits within itself and instead reinvest those profits at a higher return as it has always done. However, BAM, the new spinoff, is a very capital efficient business, which means it does not need to invest a lot of money into itself to continue growing. Therefore, BAM will be paying out 90% of its earnings as a dividend to its shareholders. So to put this simply, BN should act as more of a growth stock and BAM should act more like a dividend stock. This gives investors more optionality as well, as investors can now choose if they want the higher dividend ticker or the more growth oriented one. So that kind of explains the differences between the two companies and why Brookfield is doing this in the first place. So now let's move on to part three of this video, which is the bunch of different investor presentation slides and um, I just took screenshots from the investor presentation that I thought really explain Brookfield Asset Management's business and why they're doing this in the first place. Let's cue in the Daniel Pronk slideshow as always, and let's just get started. This is the first screenshot right here, and this shows the different countries around the world and their debt to GDP ratios. And we can see that Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, UK, and the US all have a significant amount of debt. So basically, back in 2007, when the global financial crisis happened, a lot of these countries had to take on a large amount of debt to deal with the great financial crisis and to stimulate their economies. And that debt hasn't really gone away. And since the financial crisis happened, these com the, or sorry, these countries, not companies, these countries have had to continue taking on a large amount of debt. I mean, just take a look at the US. The debt to GDP ratio is now sitting at 150%. And this is an opportunity for Brookfield Asset Management in general. So let's move on to the second slide here. And this says, to summarize, 25 years ago, we shifted our resources to asset management. Today, scale, flexibility, and global presence are our calling cards. The build-out of infrastructure and the transition to a sustainable energy future are major tailwinds for Brookfield's business. We are a partner of choice for the global corporates and businesses who wish to go private, so basically, Brookfield Asset Management can take other businesses private by doing acquisitions and funding them, essentially. And then finally, it says our growth prospects are strong given this backdrop. Basically, what Brookfield Asset Management's business is in general, they manage money and assets for other people. So for example, some large corporations may give Brookfield Asset Management, you know, billions of dollars for Brookfield to then go and manage that capital and invest it around the world. Brookfield Asset Management also likes to invest in real estate, infrastructure, renewable energy, and now insurance. So basically what this means is with countries all over the world having a high debt to GDP ratio now, it means that countries are most likely not going to 
rack up debt and, and invest into all of the infrastructure that they want to invest in over the coming decades, including renewable energy. Because the, for them to invest massively in transitioning their grids and becoming, you know, renewable energy reliant, it's going to cause it's going to involve trillions of dollars of funding. Basically, governments are not going to be able to fund all of these infrastructure projects because they're already so debt ridden and they do not want to take on more debt. So with countries being leveraged up, it's going to is going to fall on companies like Brookfield Asset Management. They're going to get the money from investors, and then they like to deploy that money into all of the infrastructure assets. So basically, they're sitting at a very nice place right now because governments do not want to invest in infrastructure. So Brookfield Asset Management is going to fill that gap and invest in infrastructure, which is exactly what the company likes to do. And they have generated very substantial returns on this. Now, moving on to the next slide. In the short term, we have had an excellent 2022. We have attracted a record $118 billion of inflows into the business throughout 2022. Think about that. While the stock market has been down, while people are kind of fleeing away from a lot of other investment vehicles, Brookfield Asset Management has, has attracted a record amount of inflows. So there is a high demand for their asset management business. Then the, continuing on, it says, have $110 billion of deployable capital today. So they still have $110 billion of capital that they're sitting on that they need to deploy and then they will manage that assets as well. They also acquired American National to dramatically expand their insurance solutions business. So they're growing their insurance business now and it's growing very rapidly. They generated strong operating results and they are positioned in cash flow businesses which are positively disposed to inflation. So a lot of Brookfield's infrastructure assets that they invest in have inflation linked hedge or, or they're hedged against inflation. So basically, as inflation rises, their assets are able to increase their cash flows, revenues and everything and their profits to match whatever inflation is doing. So Brookfield Asset Management is also an inflation hedge, which is very attractive when inflation is sitting at a 40 year high. And it looks like it's going to be high for um, a little bit longer, at least. Now, the next slide here says our differentiators create a large moat. So Brookfield Asset Management is a massive global company. So they can take in capital from basically any any corporation or any business or any investors such as myself from around the world, and then they can deploy that money around the world as well. For example, Brookfield Asset Management is deploying capital over in India and they're building out and they're building out data centers and cell phone towers in India. So they can essentially take capital from an American corporation and then they can deploy that capital over in India to get high returns on that capital. So they can invest money all over the planet wherever they think the highest returns on capital are. And this is a pretty significant moat for the business. And it allows them to continue investing large amounts of capital all over the world to generate high returns. So basically, they can go anywhere around the world to get high returns. Now, also, this next slide here I thought was important because Brookfield has been around for over 100 years and the company has been operating for over 100 years. So they have a long history of deploying capital and managing assets. And I don't think that they're going to blow up anytime soon. They've lived through inflation. They've lived through world wars. They've lived through the great financial crisis and they've come out OK and continued compounding. So I don't think that this is going to stop anytime soon. Now, the next slide here says over the past 20 years, our manager has achieved significant scale. They now have $750 billion of assets under management, which is up 250x over the past 20 years. They have $400 billion of fee bearing capital, which is up 292x over the past 20 years. And they have $4 billion of fee revenue, which is up 218x over the past 20 years. So their asset management business is growing so ridiculously quickly and it looks like it is only going to continue to do so in their next slide it says based on our plans the value of our current brookfield share should compound at 17 percent annually over the next five years from about 82 to 94 dollars to about 175 to 198 dollars over the next five years and now this share price right here includes both the brookfield asset management shares and the new bn shares as well so putting those two together they equal about 82 to 94 dollars and over the next five years, they expect these two different shares to be worth a, a, a combined of $175 to $198. Now, the next slide here says the infrastructure super cycle continues to build momentum. Then there's a bunch of different, um, you know, clips here from different articles and whatnot. This one, for example, reads the world needs $14 trillion in spending by 2050 to build out its renewable build out. So basically, the world needs $14 trillion of investment to actually change 
and shift over to a, a renewable energy society. And Brookfield Asset Management is going to help fund this transition, and they are well positioned to help fund this transition because, as we saw, governments around the world are loaded up with debt and they cannot fund this transition themselves. Then Brookfield says that this will drive growth in fee bearing capital. So, from 2017 to 2022, their fee bearing capital has tripled, and then by 2027, they are expecting it to 2.5x once again to $1 trillion. The Brookfield Asset Manager business that they spun off will have a large exposure to this fee bearing capital because that business that they spun off is literally the Brookfield Asset Management business that manages all of this fee bearing capital and they spun off 25% of the overall business. So that is what investors are basically investing in now when they buy the new ticker. So next slide says our asset manager is more diverse and growing faster than ever. So their asset management business is actually growing faster than ever right now. And then finally, the broader franchise will enable us to pursue transactions on a scale few others can consider. So basically, they're just this massive global asset manager, and their scale is attractive to investors and corporations all over the world, which is partly why they're attracting so much capital. Again, they attracted a record of $118 billion of capital in 2022. And now over the next five years, they're going to be deploying that capital throughout their different businesses and different investments all over the world. And that, and as they deploy that capital, they're going to increase their fee bearing capital. And that is going to benefit the Brookfield asset manager. Now, moving on to the next slide, we have one of the largest discretionary pools of alternative assets globally. The underlying segment says our strategies allow us to compound capital at 15% plus on a baseline basis. So their low end projections are that they are going to compound at 15% annually over the next five years. Then it says we invest across our global champions that generate inflation projected, stable, resilient, and growing annual free cash flows. These businesses base load our investment future. So they invest their capital into inflation protected, stable and resilient companies and assets that generate annual free cash flow, which is exactly what I like here on my channel as a free cash flow investor. Then the next slide says our existing businesses will continue to steadily grow their distributions, increasing their contribution to our distributable earnings. Brookfield's overall business, not just the asset manager, but also the insurance business, the real estate business, just the combined conglomerate is expecting to grow its distributable earnings by 20% annually out to 2027, which is just a fantastic growth rate. So, or the ticker symbol BN is also projecting to grow its dividend by 20% annually compounded over the next five years, which is significant in my opinion. Now, the next slide says bringing it all together. If you hold your corporation and manager shares, you should achieve a 17% total annualized return over the next five years. So that is basically what Brookfield is projecting for anyone who wants to own both of these new shares. Because remember, the company split itself up. So there's this spinoff now. Personally, I owned Brookfield Asset Management shares before the spinoff, and I now hold, you know, I just, I'm just going to keep my shares. So they're putting it plain and simple English, and they're saying, if you want to own both of your shares, or if you keep on to both of these shares, the net should be a 17% compounded annual growth rate to these shares over the next five years, which I think is very attractive. And I do think that Brookfield is going to continue executing and to grow at 17% annually. So the next slides that we have here are regarding Brookfield Asset Management's spinoff in specific now. Okay, so that's what this next segment is going to be. This says the special distribution gives investors access to a leading pure play alternative asset manager, a security that can be better understood and appreciated by the market, optionality for inorganic growth, and further adds scale and diversification to our platform. So in my opinion, the main things here are that this gives investors access and optionality to the asset management portion of the business. And it is a security that should be better understood and appreciated by the market over time, which basically means that the, the management of Brookfield Asset Management believes by spinning off this asset, it will actually trade at a premium and therefore appreciate and add value to shareholders over time. Right now, it has not done that because I think so many people are so confused about the spinoff that people are actually just selling their shares and they don't really want anything to do with these new shares. But over time, I think the market will correct this. And that's part of where the opportunity lies, in my opinion. But now let's move on to the next screenshot. And this says the special distribution is simple to execute. The special distribution to shareholders is 25% of our asset management business. Shareholders will receive one share of the manager for every four shares of Brookfield. So if you owned four shares of Brookfield before this spinoff happened, 
then for every four shares, you will get one share of the asset manager business, which is what should have happened already. This will be done on a tax-free basis in the US and Canada. And then you can see right here that the spinoff is that BAM on the Nice and or the New York Stock Exchange and the Toronto Stock Exchange, which is the TSX. So that's what I mean. BAM is now the new ticker. That is the spinoff ticker. And then BN is actually the legacy business. But let's move on. This says, they are targeting 15 to 20% targeted growth rates in their distribution. So as I said, the, the new BAM shares are projected to pay out 90% of their net income as a dividend to shareholders. Now, on top of that, they're also projecting that this distribution will grow at 15 to 20% annually over the next five years. So on top of paying out 90% of their net income as a dividend, that dividend should grow at 15 to 20% annually, which is significant. Then it says, Five years ago, the fee bearing capital of their of their asset manager once again tripled and now they are expecting it to 2.5x over the next five years. And this will directly benefit the BAM shares because they are the asset manager or their 25% of the asset manager. So as the assets that they manage grow in the overall company, their fee bearing capital, their net income, their revenue should all grow, which is how the distributions and the dividend will grow over the next five years as well. Then this next slide says fee related earnings. So the fee related earnings in 2022 are about $2 billion. And over the next five years, this is projected to more than double to 4.4 billion by 2027. And again, the Brookfield Asset Management spinoff shares are directly exposed in a pure play on this growth that you're seeing on the slide right here. So Brookfield Asset Management's net income should more than double over the next five years, and in turn, their distributions should more than double over the next five years. The next thing here is that typically when companies are spun off from their parent companies, they're given a significant amount of capital. And in Brookfield's case, they spun off the Brookfield Asset Management business with zero debt. So this new ticker, the BAM new ticker, has zero debt and it has $2.8 billion in cash and financial assets on hand. So it's literally cash rich with zero debt and it also generates $2 billion in free cash flow annually, which 90% of that is paid out to its shareholders. This is a very attractive spinoff in my opinion because again, there's zero debt, there is significant free cash flow, and there is over $2 billion of cash on hand, so the company is cash rich. Basically, what that means is this new ticker is in a very strong financial position and it's generating tons of free cash flow for its shareholders. And that free cash flow is going to grow over the next five years. And then this next screenshot here is kind of what the company is projecting over the next five years. So we can see the distributable earnings of the asset manager grew significantly in 20 from 2021 to 2022 has a payout ratio of 90 percent, as we saw, or this is basically the slide that says that. And then it says dividends paid to shareholders. In 2021, it was 1.6 billion. In 2022, 1.9 billion. And by 2027, that is expected to grow to $4 billion in distributable earnings or cash flow. Basically, what I'm trying to say here, what I'm really trying to drill home, is the new asset manager is basically going to be a massive dividend stock, and it's going to grow those dividends massively over the next five years as well. Last screenshot here on Brookfield Asset Management, they say, we are creating a security for a pure play asset light manager. That is basically what they're trying to do here. And they're trying to give us as the shareholders a pure play on their asset manager and um, significant distributions or dividends. Now, these next three screenshots here are about the legacy BN shares or Brookfield Corporation, okay? So this is no longer about the spinoff, but it is about the legacy BAM or BN business now. And this says, we have delivered annualized returns of 19% over the past 20 years. So Brookfield has a history of effectively deploying capital and creating shareholder value. This is on par with Warren Buffett, by the way. His track record is to compound his uh, capital at 20% a year. So Brookfield Asset Management has almost mimicked that over the past 20 years and compounded it 19% annually for their shareholders, which is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that they have been able to compound at 19% annually gives me confidence that they will be able to compound at 17% annually over the next five years. Then they also say, we are positioning ourselves to deliver similar returns over the next 20 years. So the business is confident that they will be able to continue compounding at 19% annually over the next 20 years. And I think that this one 
shows that the business is focused on the extremely long term, and two, means that they could generate significant returns for their shareholders who are investing today. Now, the second screenshot here, or the second slide for the corporation says, this, the distributable earnings have grown from $400 million in 2002 to about $5 billion in 2022, which is a 12x growth over the past 20 years. So they have a significant track record of growing distributable earnings for their shareholders. Then the last screenshot that I took right here, is the compounded annual returns plus multiple expansion led to 19% annual returns for shareholders. So versus the SPY, this company is absolutely destroying the S&P 500 and it's delivered outstanding returns for its shareholders. And they're projecting that this will only continue in the future. So that was the key slides that I found from Brookfield's investor presentation about the spinoff, about the asset manager in specific, and then about the corporation in specific as well. So now we're going to move on to part four of this video, which is the transcript screenshots that I took. And all of these are from the CEO, Bruce Flatt. And these are the key things that I found throughout the transcript. So this says infrastructure and the transition to sustainable energy are enormous tailwinds behind our business. And for various reasons, we happen to have really large businesses in those areas. So basically, as government infrastructure investments grow over the coming decades, and as sustainable energy investments grow over the coming decades, Brookfield Asset Management should benefit greatly. Five years from now, if we compound at 17%, which our plan sums up to, the underlying value of the business should be $198 a share. And again, that is combining both the asset manager shares and the BN shares now. The next underlying point says, we have had an excellent 2022 so far, and it looks like the rest will be pretty good. $118 billion came in, we have $110 billion of, dollars of capital to deploy, which we already learned. Our businesses are cash flow based and they're positively disposed to inflation. So this is just the CEO echoing what we already learned. Next underlying segment says the world is experiencing an enormous build out of global infrastructure and Brookfield Asset Management is going to help with that enormous global asset or global infrastructure build out. To reshore things into countries where they weren't before, to rewire energy infrastructure in Europe, to build out decarbonization, it's a massive amount of money. So basically, these are the different things that Brookfield Asset Management is helping fund around the world and getting returns on. The transition to sustainable energy on top of all of that is really, really large. And as we saw, it's a $14 trillion undertaking that the world is going to have to deliver on over the next 30 years. And Brookfield Asset Management is going to help fund that. Now, the next screenshot here says, the rest of the day is focused on the manager. So the rest of the screenshots are going to be in regards to the spinoff or the asset manager shares um, that they spun off once again. Everyone who has been a shareholder for a long time have owned 100% of this business. In the future, the corporation will own 75% and you directly will own 25% again of that asset management business. So we're in the midst of creating a separate security for our pure play alternative asset management business. Further down this says, the special distribution will give shareholders access to this leading alternative asset manager. We hope that it will be better understood and appreciated by the market. And thus basically what Bruce Flatt is saying is that he thinks that the asset manager should trade at a premium and thus create value for shareholders that way as well. We're distributing 25%. It will be a one for four. Every four shares you own, you will get one share, as we already discussed. Now, the next screenshot, we have a best in class cash flow stream and we target 15% to 20% growth in distributions. So again, they're planning on paying out 90% of their cash flow and they're expecting these distributions to grow at 15 to 20% annually. Our fee bearing capital more than doubles over the next five years. And as the fee bearing capital doubles over the next five years, the asset manager should grow its net income and cash flows and its distributions. Fee related earnings more than doubled over that period from 2 billion to 4.4 billion based on all of our plans. Secondly, the balance sheet will be incredibly powerful. Cash and financial assets, 2.8 billion. Debt, zero. I'll say that again. Debt, zero. Annual free cash flow, 2 billion. Again, not many businesses in the world have that profile. Very attractive balance sheet, very attractive cash flow, very attractive dividends in my opinion. Next screenshot, 1.8 billion of dividends to shareholders to in a quick five years, 4.1 billion of distributable earnings being sent out to common shareholders of the company. So again, dividends are going to more than double over the next five years. We are creating a security for a pure play asset light manager. Our growth profile for the next five years is highly visible. 
this should attract a premium valuation. For a brief period of time, you may be confused with the old Brookfield Asset Management, but months from now, you will forget the other one, and this will be the one called BAM. So Bruce Flatt is clearly saying that this is going to be a confusing time. Everyone is going to be confused, which is exactly what we are seeing, which is exactly why I am making this video to try and clear everything up. So he is saying that for a time, people will be confused with what's going on here. But months from now, the confusion will disappear. The premium to the BAM shares should happen, and people should not really be confused about what these two different businesses are anymore. Now, finally, the last screenshot here comes from one of the analysts asking Bruce Flatt a question, and they were asking basically about stock buyback. So that says, if you're able to execute on your plan and the market price of your stock for an extended period of time is trading at a huge discount to your plan value, are you open to doing what is necessary to na narrow the discount by buying back stock? Then Bruce Flatt down here says, if our securities don't trade out where they should, we will over time ensure that we either functionally restructure them to make them do or to use the capital within the business to buy back shares for the owner's benefit. Sorry, that was kind of worded weird. But basically, he's saying that, yes, they will buy back stock. Then he continues on. And as Nick noted, I think there's $45 billion of cash generated over the next five years within the corporation, not the asset manager of the corporation. That cash, if it doesn't trade properly, will be just given back to the shareholders by buying back stock. So we're here to build a business and deliver to the owners of the company full stop. So basically he's saying, you know what, we got some, we got significant free cash flow. And if our shares do not trade at their proper valuations, we're going to use that cash flow to buy back stock and return it to shareholders, which I think is very attractive. So that was the transcript screenshots. So now let's move on to the final part of this video, which is part five why I think that this is an opportunity. So let's start with the dividend screenshot right here. This says the corporation is expected to pay a quarterly dividend of seven cents per share on the shares. Then it says the manager is expected to pay a quarterly dividend of 32 cents per share, okay? So if we pull out our calculator really quick and we go 0.32, multiply that by four, this means that the asset manager is going to pay out a dividend of 1.28 on an annual basis. Now, the BAM shares are currently trading for $29.50. So if we divide this by 29, oops, 29.5, this means that the dividend right now on the share price today is about 4.3%, if I just want to times this by 100%. So yes, the dividend today is about 4.33%, 4.34% if we want to round up. So on the share price today, because, you know, no one is really saying the updated dividend, even here on stock unlock, we're not showing the updated dividend. But Brookfield Asset Management shares should now have a dividend of about 4.33% based on what we just read. Now, also think about this. This is a 4.3% dividend, right? And it's also projected to grow by 15 to 20% annually over the next five years. This is very rare to find in the market because think about this. This is a very high dividend of 4.2% and it's also growing at 15 to 20% over the next five years. So take a look at this stock right here, because typically if you want to find dividend yields right now of above 4% like this, you have to go to the utility sector, the real estate sector, or, or the banking sector. Now, if we go over to the utility sector, this is Canadian Utilities right here. It pays a slightly higher dividend of 4.7%, but the dividend is growing at only 4% a year. So basically, Brookfield Asset Management is going to pay out a 4.3% dividend on its share price today, and the dividends are going to be growing at 15 to 20% annually. So again, I think that it's very rare to find a dividend this high that's also growing at 15 to 20% a year, which is why I think that this is a very nice opportunity for dividend growth investors. It's a very, very attractive opportunity in my opinion. Now also, I did the math and after five years, this means that the dividend will grow to $2.57 if it compounds at 15% annually or $3.19 if it compounds at 20% annually. So basically $2.57 to $3.19 is where the dividend for Brookfield Asset Management shares should be after five years. Now on the share price today, what this means is that within the next five years, the dividend yield on cost of shares purchased today will be 8.7% to 10.8%. That is an absolutely massive dividend on a company that has no debt, is generating massive free cash flow, is growing at 15 to 20% per year, and is going to return all that cash flow to shareholders. Ultimately, personally, I think this is a huge misunderstood investment right here. I think that there's a lot of confusion around this investment. And I think that's why so many investors are selling off this stock. 
because over the past year, once these shares have started trading, investors have been selling off the stock. I mean, it's down another 4.1% today. And I think that's just because no one really knows what's going on here. But when you take a look at the facts and the underlying business and the dividends that this business is going to pay out, it's absolutely massive at 4.3%. And it's projected to grow at 15 to 20% over the next five years, which again will be a dividend yield on cost of 8.7 to 10.8% on the share price today. With that being said, I took the liberty today and I loaded up on a little bit more BAM shares because I really like this dividend and I put those shares in my tax deferred account because the dividend yield is high and the dividend is projected to grow massively over the next five years. And honestly, it's probably going to continue growing over the next 20 years. So who knows, maybe in like 10, 15, 20 years, my dividend yield on cost of Brookfield Asset Management shares today could be upwards of 20, 30, maybe even 40%, depending on how things go. So I think that is just a great entry price for this Brookfield Asset Management. I took the liberty of loading up some more shares in addition to what I was already spun off because I really like this dividend. And I put those shares in my tax deferred account so that I am not taxed on that dividend income. And I'm just gonna let that dividend income grow. So this was a massive video. This took so much freaking research. I've been recording forever. My voice hurts because of how much I've been talking. So please, you guys, if you appreciate this video and all of this explanation, please leave a like on the video. I would really appreciate it. Show my channel some support. I would really appreciate it. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel again, because I did so much research, so much work. And I want to, I really wanted to explain why I think that this is an opportunity and the full investment thesis that I have here. So please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, check out my, my research platform stock unlock. If you're new here, you can go and get a 14 day free trial with no credit card required. Go and check out the platform. It is the best investing platform that you will find on the internet. I can promise you that. If you use stock on a walk, you will become a better investor. So please go check out the platform. <laughs> that's my number one ask actually for this video. Please go check out stock on a walk. But that's going to wrap up the video, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it to the end of the video, God freaking bless you. I truly appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I cannot say thank you enough for being a supporter of my channel. And I really hope to see you all again in my next video. I got to go drink some water. <laughs> thank you guys again for watching. I love you. And uh, I hope to see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>